I'm Anthony Citrano. I'm Vice President of Marketing and Communications at Edgecast. Uh, a lot of you probably know who we are. We're a content delivery network. Essentially make your videos load faster for users around the world. I won't bore you with a big sales pitch, but uh, if you need streaming, stuff like that, uh, we're the ones to help you. Um, the session, you already see uh, what we're going to talk about here today, Viral Evolve, Creating Social Value with Online Video. Um, I actually wanted to open with a quote from uh, some research uh, a friend of mine did a number of years ago at Microsoft about the concept of continuous partial attention. And I hate when people get up in front of a group and read, but that's exactly what I'm going to do, briefly. To pay continuous partial attention is to pay partial attention continuously. It is motivated by a desire to be a live node on the network. Another way of saying this is that we want to connect and be connected. We want to effectively scan for opportunity and optimize for the best opportunities, activities, and contacts in any given moment. To be busy, to be connected, is to be alive, to be recognized, and to matter. We pay continuous partial attention in an effort not to miss anything. It is an always on, anywhere, anytime, any place behavior that involves an artificial sense of constant crisis. We are always in high alert when we pay continuous partial attention. This artificial sense of constant crisis is more typical of continuous partial attention than it is of true multitasking. I think a lot of us think that we can multitask, we really can't. We're essentially time slicing, we're essentially time sharing. And I mean, I, I personally have to wonder if this is healthy for society, but it is nonetheless the reality, the psychocultural reality, that uh, marketers, storytellers, producers, and directors are forced to navigate in. So our attention spans are compressing considerably over the years, while simultaneously the universe of content from which to choose is exploding dramatically. So brands need to work harder and smarter to be heard. And that's what this panel is about, standing out, having an impact, and creating real social value with video. To help us do that, we have two experts here to share with you some best practices, insights, on how best to leverage the tools we have available to us now to rise above that noise and have an impact that endures well beyond the few seconds of partial attention that we can expect from the average viewer. First, John Weaver, a producer at Fanatics. He's got more than 10 years of film production experience, responsible for, a f for full life cycle video production for campaigns including NBC Sports and Bulls.com. It's yours, John. All you right. ready? All right. Hi, it's me. All right, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone who has stuck around on a Friday afternoon to uh, partake in this discussion. Also, I'd like to thank Live Clicker for inviting me here to speak with you guys. And I would like to apologize in advance. In preparing for 20 minutes of content, I ended up with like 30 minutes. So you'll see in my slides, I'm gonna sort of gloss over a couple of things, maybe skip some things outright to just keep to the best information I can possibly give you guys. Um, starting with this, I'm John Weaver, I make videos. Okay, next. We are all gathered here today because of the ongoing explosion of online video. Specifically, I'd like to talk to you about the new opportunities with social video that allow us to go outside of the boundaries of our websites and to meet the customer or the potential customer, where they socialize, where they play and hang out. Social media has embraced video. Just this year, Vine, who is owned by Twitter, has taken center stage in the social media world. Following close on their heels is Instagram, the popular photo manipulation and sharing app. They've also jumped onto this video bandwagon. The best part about all of this is that the technology to get into social video is already right here, microphone, in your pocket. Everything you need, technically, is all ready to go. Now you might be saying to yourself, John, really, you're going to tell me that I can represent my million dollar, billion dollar brand with a cell phone video? And I'm going to talk to you that yes, this Format is accepted by the consumer. They are used to seeing content created on the cell phone. They accept the limitations of what you create with the cell phone. And as long as you play within the rules of social media, you're going to do just fine. 
I found this graphic on TechCrunch.com, and it does a really good job illustrating the differences between Instagram and Vine, the two examples I'm going to be using in my discussion. For time's sake, I'm just going to touch upon what I feel are the most important takeaways. First of all, Instagram, you get a whopping 15 seconds to tell your story. Vine's more interesting. They only give you six seconds. This next feature, delete the last clip. For those of you who have not used these apps, you can cobble together a series of shots to create your little video. Now, if you're shooting a video on Vine and you get halfway through your little story and you screw up a shot, sorry, too bad, start over. Instagram, having the advantage of being second to market, gives you the ability to delete that shot you just messed up, do a new one, get it right, and push it out there. I'm going to jump to the very last point, probably the greatest differentiator between these two apps, looping. Okay, when you get to the end of your Instagram video, it's over. You want to watch it again, you have to click play. Vine does this really interesting thing where the video will continue to loop over and over until your audience member clicks away or stops the video. Now, in my mind, this gives you two advantages. Sure, it's six seconds, but if you've got a clear message, that message will repeat over and over again until the person clicks away. Second of all, it gives you a great creative opportunity to use this little technical flaw. If you can manipulate that looping, you're going to be one step up uh, from your competition. Okay, so again, why social video? We've already talked about reaching people where they socialize. These apps allow you to push your video straight to your social media platform. If, you're already, if you already have an audience in Twitter and Facebook, you can make your video and shove it right to this audience. You don't have to find a new audience. You don't have to create an audience. It's already there. Video, as we all know, allows for a more complex message. You've got moving images. You can make use of audio. And because of the venue where these videos are shown, you have the ability to add additional messaging. When you're pushing your Vine video to Twitter, you can take advantage of Twitter's 140 characters, hashtags, all that good stuff. And then there at the bottom, there's that message that your parents warned you about. Everyone else is doing it. And yes, they are doing it. And if they're not doing it right now, they're going to be doing it real soon because this stuff is showing no signs of slowing down. Um, as I'll talk about a little bit later, more and more people are jumping in on this. More and more developers are creating apps to take advantage of video. OK. So you all ready to jump out there and make some social video? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait on a second. Before you go shoving your three major points and giving that hard sell to your audience, you got to understand the mm, fancy term, lingua franca of social video. Social has its own culture, its own language. And if you're not talking that language, you're going to be ignored. What makes social video social video? Well, if you're used to texting or if you're used to using Twitter, you understand the sort of abbreviation of communication. Right? Uh, if you've used a term like LOL, OMG, WTF, you know what I'm talking about. Social video is the same. To get that message out in the time that you are afforded, you have to compress things, keep it short, keep it clippy. Um, you, you find people making use of uh, what we in the production business hate, the jump cut. Also, yes, because of what you're shooting on, the production value is going to be a little bit lower. You don't have the benefit of fine quality glass to shoot your video through. But because of the very way these apps work, the fact that the video that you're sharing with your audience has to be made right now and shared right now, the end user knows that. They're familiar with this. They understand that what just showed up in their uh, news feed just happened. That this person they're looking at in this funny outfit is still out there wearing that funny outfit. And there's sort of this emotional pull that goes with that, with knowing that this is something that is going on right now. Now, I was asked uh, before doing this presentation, Justin Foster wanted me to try to clarify what makes, what you do with Vine versus what you do with Instagram. What's the difference, you know? And the more I dug into it, the more I looked at examples I see people doing a lot of the same things. 
uh, uh, doing stop motion animation is pretty cool right now. Um, so the difference between the two really comes down to the functionality of the app. The fact that a Vine video loops sets it apart from Instagram. I don't think that there's anything else that says, well, you should be doing this kind of video with Vine or this kind of video with Instagram. It's just what limitations are there and how can you creatively get around them. Real quickly, I want to remind you of why these videos are short. The venue where these videos are consumed is full of other content. Your Vine video is not a standalone video. It shows up in line with a bunch of other Vine videos. Or if it's on someone's Facebook feed, it shows up with what Aunt Martha had for dinner last night. So the creators of these apps, knowing this and wanting you to continue to use their software, said we have to make sure people keep the content short so that way when it's consumed, people can look at it, give you that attention, but then move on to the rest of their things. So you have to keep that in mind, that when you're putting something out there socially, it's not going to be there in front of people's eyeballs for very long, which means that, yes, you're going to have to work a little bit harder to keep those eyeballs on you for the few extra precious seconds. I really wanted to talk about high concept, but for the sake of time, I'm going to skip it. If anyone is interested in high concept, what it is and how you can use it uh, to effectively uh, tell your message, come see me afterwards. It's, it's a really fun concept, but I've got to move on. As a matter of fact, I'm going to move on to, to the final point on this slide. Um, look, these apps are new, and I realize that a lot of you have more of a traditional marketing base, and that with uh, technology continuing as it is, all these new apps can just be confusing, and how to use this one or that one. I promise you that there are people within your organization who are probably already playing with this stuff. So I encourage you, empower people within your organization who are familiar with the apps to be involved in the planning and creation of the content. At the very least, they are your in-house litmus test for whether or not your message is going to be accepted out there. You know, again, if you're trying to go out there with your hard sell, these people will hopefully say, you know what, that's, that's just not going to fly in this community. And you can take a step back and sort of temper that message a little bit. Yeah. So now we, it's time to show you an example. This is an Instagram video that was put out by Burberry uh, just last month during one of their fashion shows in London. I love this Instagram video for two reasons. First of all, it abides by the rules of social video. The clips are short. They, they kind of jump around a little bit. The, while it's, it's a decent video, I mean, it's slightly out of focus. But at the same time, this is exactly the kind of video I would expect from Burberry. Okay? Burberry, in this video, has managed to maintain their brand identity, something that I know bothers a lot of companies when they think about shooting with a cell phone or a tablet. Um, it's arty. It's got this sort of chic, avant-garde sort of, check this out. It's Burberry. And I tap it. That's it, 15 seconds, you're done. I'm going to play this again, and I, this time I want you to watch it and, and look for a couple of things. Look for the story. I believe that there is a clear beginning, middle, and end to this video. Furthermore, you definitely get, you know which brand this is for, you get a glimpse at their product line, and all the while, it's done under the guise of social video. So check this thing out again. No, don't look at me yet. Pretty groovy? Yeah. Okay. On my next slide, which you had a quick glimpse of, I'm going to show you two more videos. Now, what's special about these videos is I made them. <laughs> Don't laugh. I'm going to explain this. So 
two videos side by side. On the left, we've got is going to be a Vine video. On the right is an Instagram video. Both videos feature the same product. It's something called a manzi. It's essentially an adult footed pajama. <laughs> These things sell a lot. Now, uh, uh, I work for Fanatics Incorporated, and we have many, many different websites. One of our entities is fansedge.com. Fans Edge right now is trying to differentiate itself from the rest of the family by skewing towards a younger audience, hipper, cooler, yeah, and a little funnier audience. So I took that into consideration when making these. So let's first look at my treatment on Vine. Tap, tap. <laughs> oh, they redid my slides. This is supposed to repeat, so we'll do it manually. Okay. If it did what it was supposed to do, you would see that it loops, and it's even though you can kind of tell where that loop point is, it works. You know, it just keeps going and going. The beat still goes, and there's never like that. Oh, the video's over. Oh, it started over again. But Instagram is different. It's linear. You start here, you finish there, and it's over. So in my Instagram version, you're going to see some similarities. It's quirky. It's a little silly. It's got the same people. It's got the same product, but um, a slightly different treatment. For giggles, one more time. Short, sweet, and silly. And this slide, I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the technical challenges that come along with shooting on a cell phone. But again, for the sake of time, I'm skipping down to the most important part, the most important takeaway here. If you already have production capabilities where you work, I highly encourage you to use those tools while you're making your social videos. Um, I fully believe that you can get away with using these tools, yet still being authentic with the message. All right, so if you have video lights in-house, by all means, use them. Lights are great for creating mood, for creating emotion, for capturing your audience. If you want to use audio in your social videos, get those speakers right up next to your iPad because the farther they are away, the, the, the more echoey they're going to be. And uh, something I'm going to be experimenting with here in the next couple of weeks, uh, a lot of us who create videos for our brands, we like to put a little watermark in, right? You know, like, this is who we are. Don't forget us. I'm going to be experimenting with printing out the brand logo on a transparency. Put that up in front of the camera and see if I can shoot my video through that. Get my little video or my little brand logo in there. Um, because again, there's no post production on these things. One of the harder things to do is to uh, lock your camera down. A lot of us in production, we like to put our camera on a tripod, nice and steady shot. But it's only recently that, you know, Things have hit the market that make it easy to mount your cell phone to a tripod. Uh, so again, you're going to have to be creative. This is my really high-tech, state-of-the-art iPad mounting system. <laughs> Note the wire shelving unit and the copious use of alligator clips. <laughs> hey, we do what we got to do. All right. You just walked in? Five minutes? Perfect. We're going to do this. All right. So I'm getting close to wrapping it up. Some of you may still be wondering, all right, John, I get it. You know, everyone's doing social media. It's in my pocket. But honestly, I don't know what I'm going to make with it. I, you know, I'm so used to editing and doing flashy stuff. What do I do? Who here remembers the movie Be Kind, Rewind? OK. A really fun movie. I'm going to show you uh, the trailer for that movie, and it's going to lay out my, my, my basic point here. Um, 
But just to summarize, we've got two characters. They work at a, at a videotape rental store. One day, they accidentally erase all the tapes. Oh, no, they don't want to lose their jobs. So what do they do? They find out what the people are coming in to rent, and then they reshoot the movie. The caveat is they've got to do it by the next day, and they're shooting it on VHS. So what do you do? So for inspiration's sake, have a watch. A watch. A watch. Uh, rewound this tape all over and it's blank. Really? This video don't work. Yours looks like this. Look, look, look! All the tapes are blank! It's the TV, Mike. Show me how it... Why is it doing that? Does that happen when you do it? Uh-oh. What is wrong with you? Why is it doing that when you do that? You're magnetized! You erased these tapes! It's you! You gotta find new tapes. I got a better idea. Follow me. When you're walking down the street yeah. and you see a little ghost, what? what you gonna do about Ghostbusters? What? What? What is that? That's the Ghostbusters theme song. Okay, here comes no. the important part. I'm pretty sure it is. There's something strange. Stay where you are. I'm on my way. Then I got slime. That wasn't bad. What else y'all got? I will shoot you, and I know robot karate. Nothing from nothing, leave nothing. Oh. These are not just simple remakes. Yeah, yeah. Oh. What's happening to our eyes? <laughs> our version is better. Our version is only 20 minutes. You gotta have something. We're celebrities now. People recognize me in the street. Go over the kids. Go now, kids, and now. Why do I have to kiss Wilson? You have to keep her from blowing your I'm head off. Amateurs. People want to see these movies. I have a warrant to destroy all your tapes. The FBI warning, it's at the beginning of the tape. But we erased that. Damn, they're good. They can shoot any style. You name it, we shoot it. Be kind, rewind videos a la carte. Nothing from nothing, be nothing. With heart and soul. Driving Miss Daisy. Okay! Okay, okay. Not the spot. Are you, are you dead? Knock it off. Don't you talk to me like that. Go like the wind, run. Are you dead? Run, okay. Don't know how to get away. Okay, again, why did I show that? We saw the example of Ghostbusters in there. Look, they, they didn't have the, the opportunity to use fancy optical effects and poster to cut it together. So what did they do? Creative solution to making those effects real. A little hokey, a little cheesy? Absolutely. But if you really commit to something and you really give it that effort, you'll pull it off and your audience will love you for it. Um, as a matter of fact, this, this movie even uh, gave rise to this term sweet. If you go out there and Google or on YouTube and look up sweeting, you're going to find a lot of people. There's even a sweeting film fest out there. So, just keep that in mind when you're wondering, how do I possibly do this? Last slide. OK, final thoughts. Never been easier to incorporate video into your marketing strategy. It's in your pocket. So if you want to play, go right out there and do it. Mobile video consumption continues to rise. And for that very reason, these tech giants keep creating more and more apps to make it easier and easier to use video, because people are going to do it. And so should you. And finally, if there was one takeaway, Creativity will prevail in the face of the technical limitations that you face in this format. Thank you for listening. I look forward to your questions at the end of the session. Thanks, John. Um, before introducing Max, I made a huge faux pas. I read a, a brilliant quote from a research person at Microsoft and didn't give you her name, Linda Stone. She gets all the credit for what I read when we opened. Uh, next up is Max Kaiser, uh, 20 years uh, in video and film, various roles uh, in film production. He's past director of the Bellingham Film Festival, founder of Handcrake Films, where he's been for 10 years now, uh, and has won multiple awards, including Goldie Telly, 
Awards, the, and the World Media Award for Excellence in Documentary Production. Max, all yours. Hello. <clears throat> Thank you, guys. I was, a, I was a little nervous this morning when I was at the first uh, breakout panel, and there were like 70, 80 people there. I thought, oh, man, I, I really expected there to be about 10. So I'm glad my dreams came true, and I'm much more comfortable with this size audience. And uh, I was also kind of thinking about the fact that, um, you know, back in, in high school, in junior high school, you'd have that teacher that everyone loved to go to because you knew they were going to play movies in that class. And, and you wouldn't really have to do a whole lot or think very much. And I'm happy to tell you I'm that teacher. And that most of you are just going to be watching movies because that's what I brought to show you is the stuff that, that we do. Um, but yeah, my name is Max Kaiser. I uh, own Handcrank Films. And, and Handcrank Films, we have, we have offices in uh, Seattle and Washington, D.C. and also in this little town, Bellingham, that, that we started it. And this little town, Bellingham, is about a half an hour from the border in Canada, or border with Canada in Washington State, and that's where, uh, that's where for various reasons, uh, we got started, and it, it actually kind of wound up, it wound up forming a lot of, uh, a lot of who we are. Um, and, and what we're about, I actually started shooting on a Bolex hand crank camera, because I wanted a different look, because I wanted to capture people's attention. But, uh, but really, what, what we're all about is, uh, is, is creating, we've wound, up, we've wound up going from that to creating these pretty high-end films. We're kind of the antithesis in many ways of what John was, uh, was talking about. And then we actually, we actually do produce these films pretty, pretty highly. And, and, uh, and, and, but, what we, but what we do with them is, is, really, is really interesting. And the effects that they have on people are, are really kind of interesting. And it's, it's kind of weird to me to be at this conference because um, this conference is a amazing, and there is so much information. You know, you can go to these things and feel like you learn nothing, or you can go to these things and feel like I am now surfeit. I now have all the information that my brain can take, and I'm kind of in that state right now um, because there's so much great information. But there's also a lot of this sort of new media stuff that is uh, a little, you know, it, it's very much slice and dice, and it's very much like working with, uh, with, with tweet metrics and all these kind of great things. And, and I'm, I'm sad for most of you to tell you that I don't really know much about any of that stuff. That all hand crank films, what we really know about is connecting with people with films, really connecting with them quite emotionally. And that's, that's turned out, thanks to the fact that the interwebs came along just in time to save us, uh, that that really works, and that that really works for people on these, and we've heard that all day, basically. And so this is kind of a nice chance for many of you to sit back and watch what that can mean, and what that can mean to nonprofits, to communities, and now to brands, which we're starting to work with a lot more to do our films. Our films aren't actually that short for the most part. I mean, we do 30 second ads and stuff, but the amazing part is people stick around and watch the whole thing. And it really gets them deeply engaged with the brands that they're, that they're watching. And I'll just shut up now and play one so you can kind of get an idea and you realize I'm not just talking out of my butt because they are kind of cool. So uh, here's the first one. I think there's a play button here somewhere, maybe? You gotta tap it Oh, on. there it is. I just didn't even know where it was. Um, I'll just set the stage a little bit. A l number of years ago, Google was gonna offer uh, fiber to uh, a town in America. And so they went to these towns and they said to the mayors, convince us why we should go to your town. Do how many people remember this? And like the mayor jumped in with the sharks and they renamed Topeka, Kansas, Google, Kansas, and all these kind of things. Well. Our mayor, this little town of Bellingham, we were just getting started. He came to us and said, could you make us a film uh, in like two weeks to help you know, make, make them want to, want to use us? And so this is, this is the film that, that we made. They say a gift is what you make of it. In our town of Bellingham, we make the most of our gifts. The gift of our brave public service. All six Bellingham fire stations. The 
gives me an idea. Of doctors who heal us using the nation's most electronically connected hospital. This is it. Of our universities that inspire our future. of our community organizers, of our leaders who have a vision, of our fishermen who feed the world, of our families that call Bellingham home. In Bellingham, Washington, we are 75,000 souls, entrepreneurs, artists, software developers, green tech researchers, and adventurers thriving at the edge of North America where the sea meets the mountains. We make the most of our gifts here. Imagine what we could do with yours. Okay. So, so the thing is, is that 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 video, um, you know, it, it wound up. We didn't actually get the Google Fiber. It turned out in the small print it said, your town has to own all of its own telephone poles. And we didn't as a town, so there was no way we were ever going to do it. But what it did do was get a lot of views, which was great, you know, 40, 50,000, which for a town of 40 or 50,000 people is not too bad. Um, but what it really did was, if you actually looked in those comments, the engagement was off the charts. The comments went on and on and on. And people kept on talking about how much they just loved our town. And the, there were people writing from all around the world who had visited once and all kinds of things. So what was amazing was that metric that I'm hearing more and more today and everyone's starting to say views is not really the thing, that it's engagement. That metric of engagement was like huge. And it really, it, it, it also had that metric of keeping everyone on the, in the film the whole time. And it's because it kind of leads you along and it keeps a payoff until the very end. And, it, and these are some of the things I'm hoping to impart to you about there's many different ways to go in doing a Vine film or doing an Instagram film or something uh, homemade or whatever. There's no, there's no sort of right or wrong, all, all those. And I think these, this level of film can play really well with those as well as other parts. But sometimes these can be really good uh, tentpole type, uh, type films. And, and, and what, what they look to do, and, and I'll, have, I'll show you some more examples of them, but what they're doing is they're finding a common ground with the audience. They're, they're looking for something sympathetic. They're always, they're always asking the, the, the hero of the product to be, to be together with you, to be, to be on the same level of, as you. You're never telling them anything. You're always including them. And you're always trying to find something bigger than the sort of product. If the product in this case was getting Google, that was sort of meaningless. There was no way to really attach, uh, attack that. But the, if the product is like, it's our town, it's our life, then that is something that people can really believe in and they can really become and want to be a part of. Um, and and, and it, it helps to try to, all this helps, sort of helps to try to persuade someone that, that being a part of this or doing this is, is kind of the right thing. The next film jumps from a very, very small level where we started to the, actual, to the national stage. And this was a film a few years later when we'd grown a bunch that we were asked to do uh, by um, a Muslim advocacy group during the 9-11 uh, mosque controversy. And so I don't know if you guys remember this, but they wanted to build a mosque right, right next to, to uh, the World Trade, where the World Trade Center had uh, been before. And it was a very highly contested issue. And there was a lot of people making a lot of anti-mosque uh, film or, or videos, commercials, spending a lot of money. And they, they hired our company to sort of 
uh, try to change public opinion in some way to sort of show their side of the story. Um, and, uh, and I'll show you the, the PSA that we made and tell you what happened with it. Everybody was inching closer and closer instead of moving farther away. It just didn't sink in. It, it didn't. Guys were just crawling under beams, crawling under cars, climbing on top of things. I had a very good friend of mine. His name was Sean Powell. And he worked in my firehouse for a while. When my friend came up to me and told me that Sean Powell was on the list, I was like, no, he's not. And I took out my phone and I called him. That's really when it hit me and I was like, okay, this is real. That, you know, that's, that's when it hit me. I'm a New York City firefighter, and I responded to 9-11, and I am a Muslim. So what we did there was, what we tried to do is change the, change the story, you know, to say, like, who owns that? Why do you think that you own, because you're a Christian or whatever, that you own the 9-11 story? No one does. We all do. It happened to all of us. We were all part of it, and we just tried, created a campaign to say, hey, we're all part of it. That campaign wound up doing really, really, really well. It wound up doing exactly what we all hope is going to happen with these sort of campaigns. First of all, it wound up getting a million views on various platforms. That's fantastic. Um, the, it also, they ran it as PSAs nationwide as well. But uh, the other things it did was it was also on the front page of Yahoo for a day. And that's pretty cool because you, know, you can't buy that, right? That's, that's, that's a lot of people checking out what you do. But even cooler than that, there was a 10-minute CNN segment about this PSA and other PSAs that we, we made three that day. We shot these all in one day in New York City. And, uh, and you can see, I mean, production value is not high. You know, it wasn't a big deal. It looks nice, and we, we shot it nicely. But, um, but anyway, we come in there, and, and, and they do a 10-minute CNN segment on it in, 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 in retrospect. That really, so for our client, it was like, off the hook successful for them because it, it generated something broader than what they sort of started with and it allowed them to really start changing the conversation that was going on around this social issue. Um, one interesting funny note about that um, piece and about how things can happen in life that are really nice and that's how most things happen to me but uh, is that guy that guy walked in He's, he's a very attractive African-American man. And, you know, because basically the client had said, uh, we're going to bring in people who are 9-11 responders for you to, uh, to shoot. And, and, and I'm, you know, I had no idea what I was going to get. And, and so they, this guy comes in. He's this very attractive African-American man. And, and I'm like, wow, you, you look great. This is gonna be, he's a firefighter. He's just all these things. And he, I said, what do you do when you're not firefighting? He goes, oh, I'm a professional actor. I was just like, thank you, <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, when I had to go in for close-ups, I was like, can you cry again? Yeah, I can cry again. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's just <laughs> stuff like that. So, I mean, it was just, it was just really cool. But it, it turned out really well for everybody. And, uh, and it was, an, and again, not a super highly produced thing, but a produced thing for sure. And uh, so what, uh, um, the number one thing in, in our films, even though we're producing them highly, it doesn't change what a lot of people have been saying here today, and that is it really comes down to truth. People are looking for some sort of truth. And if you look, I, I think one of the most interesting ways to put this, look at what Google is doing with their algorithms today. Why do they keep changing the algorithm? Then not to just be assholes, although there's a lot of people that think that's the case. But they, they're changing it because they're trying to find a better way of getting you, the typer, the person looking, the seeker, to the true knowledge, not the knowledge that's the fake backlinks and all that kind of stuff. They're trying to get you to the guy that actually has the knowledge to answer your question. And that's why they changed the algorithm, driving all these SEO guys who make a lot of money in SEO and, 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 and thanks to Google in many ways, but, but to driving them crazy because they've figured, they think they've cracked the code when the code is so, so simple. All Google is saying is be true, have that knowledge, have that information, and we will make sure people get to you. And that's why people use Google too, because you know I'm not going to waste my time going to the guy who's marketing to me. So what people want is truth. But you can do truth in a lot of ways. Truth doesn't have to be actually someone who is the person standing there and saying, I love this product. It can also be dressed up in a lot, a lot of different ways. And that's sort of what we do. And the other thing I would add is that 
um, there's a certain question of sentimentality versus cleverness. And I, I, our company's voice is sentimentality. That's what we do well. We, just like all of my directors, uh, we have, I have four directors at our company. Uh, it, it just seems to be that's what we like. I mean, we can do humor, and humor has a little part of it, like when the little girl gets shushed in the thing. I mean, humor is a key element to it. But at the end of the day, we sort of do sentimentality well. And, and, and there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of companies that are doing sentimentality. Adweek just did something, sentimentality versus cleverness. And you know, a company that does cleverness well is like Mechanism this morning. Those guys do it really, really well. I mean, they're very funny guys. That's kind of unusual. If you can actually nail that, that's fantastic. But you see a lot of sentimentality here with, uh, oops, uh, sorry. Uh, Oh, well, anyway, I had the names of them on the side at one point, but I, I did my, my presentation in Keynote, and then they translated to PowerPoint, so I, it's anybody's guess, but I'm like the one guy in the world using Keynote, but uh, uh, <laughs> it's because I, 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 uh, anyway, um, there's like that, that top right one's a Subaru ad, right, with the dad leaving his daughter, or, you know, we all know the Clydesdale butt ad. That's a bad example. Those are not good. I don't know why they keep making those, other maybe people just love horses, but um, it's something that, that people use again and again and again. And you see, my favorite right now are the Chrysler ads. Chrysler is really working this. Or on, at the at the um, at the Super Bowl, you had sort of the tractor uh, Paul Harvey in America voice, and they said those tracked better than a lot of the stuff that was a lot lot more clever. And the thing is, people stick around for it, and they really feel it in their heart. And that tends to lead to a lot of sharing and a lot of engagement when they just feel it, because our heart is our most natural, true. Um, sort of detector of untruth. Uh, I think there's another way to put it, but <laughs> bullshit detector. But it's, it, the heart really is the one that, that, that leads us to that, and it's why we go for it. And it's not anything new, but it does work well on, on web. Um, because longer form, which we are allowed to do on web, we don't have to do 30s or, or, or minutes, allows for more connection. People watch those films all the way through to the end. You know, I, I don't have a lot of metrics. I know the metrics from like our own personal portfolio website. And what's amazing to our web people that work on our site is they're like, I've never seen a site where everyone watches all the videos all the way to the end. And, and when the, the sticking around is not you know, a minute or two, it's like eight minutes for every visitor that we have to our site. And it's, um, there's also obviously the ability to act right away, and then the ability to back up claims with facts. Again, true, like if I make a film for someone, like you'll see a couple here where we move from social things, which are kind of easy because like it's easy to get behind like, yeah, yeah, we shouldn't really be bigots or whatever, you know, that's true, to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to something like, I need to buy some new shoes, uh, it's a little harder to get people's heart involved, although actually we saw a great film from Pop Tent this morning about shoes and Mother's Day, uh, wonderfully uh, touching and, and really worked for the client. But I also get to this idea that someone said in Ad Week recently, and I'll just go ahead and plagiarize and pretend like it was me, but uh, that a long time ago brands used to sell products. Today brands want to be your friend. That's the, that's the big goal, is, is not just to sell product, but to be your buddy, to be your friend, to be your place, Facebook, that thanks, that you would, that you would go to. Um, and that, that's really a difference. Um, and it's what I would say to all of you, if you're thinking about making films for the web and stuff like that, is don't start by thinking, how can I be their friend? You know, that, that, that's totally weird. Like, that's in high school, like, going in and being like, how can I be friends with him? You know, it's like, I did that, and it never worked. Uh, but... <laughs> You, you really, what you're really trying to do is figure out what kind of stuff that we do, do other people do, that we all kind of like, and, and what do we share together? What's the wave that we can all surf on together? And, and that's really what you're looking to ride. You're really trying to find that place that together you go, and then you sort of share, yeah, we do a little bit of that, and you guys do a little bit of that, and hopefully those interests will conjoin, and then you can also be you know, slyly, you know, and we also happen to make this shoe thing that you might want to try. But uh, it, it really allows your product a chance to be part of something bigger. And what's really cool about these films, I'm going to show, I had two more, but I don't have enough time to show both. I'm just going to show one more. What's really cool with this company, uh, Superfeet, that uh, is, a, is a national company, I think this will be it, um, is that they make these insoles. They're a really weird company. A lot of people don't, they actually have Superfeet insoles. They don't even know what that means or whatever. And they needed a way to tell people who we actually are and what it is to have an insole and what that means. And so they hired us a couple of, for a couple of years to make these films for them. And they go on the front of their website, and they're not, 
They're not the kind of film that, uh, that, that gets high click rates or views and everything, but for their website, everybody that comes watches this film, watches this film all the way through, and it really allows them to understand exactly what Superfeet's about and hopefully to make a more informed purchase. Um, but, but take a look, because what it really does is it says, what we really love is what you love, and we really want to be a part of what you're a part of, and we support that, and we believe in that. And hopefully it says, let's be friends. So let's, uh, let's hope that this is the right one. You can't see them. You might not even feel them. But they're working. In 1977, our commitment to old school craftsmanship has stood its ground. That's when an inventor and a podiatrist fused their ingenuity and pioneered an industry. their workbench in our lab, the two created a product with a shape and function that has allowed people to pursue dreams otherwise out of reach. People rely on us, and that's a responsibility we take seriously. might sound strange, but it's brought us this far, and we're not going away. We've got a job to do. You can't see them, but we're okay with that, because it was never about the product. It has always been about you. So again, that that actually that fe that piece is actually not quite done yet. That that one is when we just finished, and I just thought it'd be kind of fun to show. Um, but again, it it comes back to uh, something that shares with them our that company's reason for being, that company's reason for for existing. And what's super cool, and the last thing I'll leave you on with these films, when you when you make them this way, when you embrace this, is it actually works in two ways. It works outside of the company, but what's amazing is how much it works inside of the company and how the people that work at the company love these things and really care about them. And then of course the CEOs love them, but it, it, they really, they, it redefines who they think they are and, what, and it reminds them why they do it. And so that, that really is, uh, is kind of what's neat. So I guess in, in, in some I'm really just uh, trying to show you, you know, another approach, another thing that uh, with all these tweets, clicks, everything, that there's still, there's got to be a lot of heart in it to really touch people and really capture them and really bring them home to the brand and to all that stuff. And that you can do a lot after that with other things. And you can do a lot of people uploading their own films about how they use Superfeed or whatever. And I've certainly gotten a lot of ideas here today about, you know, stuff we could do with our clients that way. But at the end of the day, there's still, there's still room for some other stuff too. So thanks anyway. Thanks, Max. Um, I thought that was great. I, 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 uh, I think what you, one of the things that you said applies across mediums, whether you're doing it six seconds, six minutes, or six hours, which is be true. I mean, I, one of the things I was going to ask John was, uh, you, I've seen a lot of brands in different mediums, Vine, places like that, Instagram, just making fools out of themselves because they clearly don't understand the medium and that's I think one of the lessons that I think some brands could probably apply well no matter what medium they're in, right? No, I absolutely agree that um, you've got a message you want to share with people but you've got to fit that message for the venue where it's playing. You know, there's a specific way to approach a television ad versus a YouTube ad versus uh, a social video ad and uh, you just have to cater 
to that venue. Um, I, I've got a few other things, but I don't want to dominate. We only have a few minutes for questions. Uh, I think there were question forms, and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to solicit them or just call on folks. So uh, I'm probably uh, breaking the, uh, the form here, but uh, who, who's got a question, comment? Come on. Yeah. Yes. I have a question yeah. Oh. Video, because that music was awesome. I was going to say that. Too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, we have a hard time with that music. Yeah, we don't do that. We create all of our own music, basically. Uh -huh. and, and, and but what's amazing is, talk about, you know, people are looking for value. There's so many amazing composers out there today willing to do it very inexpensively. I mean, our films are not really that expensive. I mean, compared to, like, what people think of as expensive, like, like in film, they're, they're really not. Like, it's a very approachable cost. And you can get people that can... Most of our com compositions cost about 350 to 500 bucks, you know, and yet what you get for that is your own true sound, and, and you just aren't going to find that with stock music, and, and so it's as key to me to not use stock imagery in our films as it is to not use stock music, you know, to really look out for something that is, that is original and true, and, and, uh, and so, so that's, that's, that's how we do it. And, and we work with the same composers again and again and again to, to, to do that. And it actually, it actually takes us just as long when a, when a client says, let's just use stock. It takes just as long for us to go hunting for stock for four hours. And they wind up paying as much as they do if we just say, hey, let's just start from scratch. But then they get their own soundtrack. Anyone else? Yes. Fundamentally, it's the same, all right? It starts with a vision. You've, you've got a message, you've got sort of a goal that you want to achieve, and, and then you start hammering out the details. What do I need to achieve that? Um, again, you know, going after the venue, uh, knowing your audience is going to help along the way, but it's you identify it, you write it, you tweak it, and then you start putting the pieces into play. Yeah, I, I think... Um for us, I mean, for us, the pre-production process sort of begins, like, the, the analogy I would use is like a surfer standing there looking at the waves, trying to, trying to wait and find the right one. And, and, and the first thing the client usually comes in saying is, I got this product, I want to sell it. And we say, no, whoa, whoa, you don't. That's not how you're going to work. It's not going to work. Um, what you need to do is say, you know, what we say is like, well, what, who, who, who is, who is part of your party? Who's, who's going to the event and, and that kind of thing. And, and then once they tell us that, then we sit back and we really look at it for a long time and try to say like, well, which one of these sort of waves coming in is the one that we can kind of crest on and, 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 and sort of ride out. And in the case of like, um, uh, in the case of both the 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 911 and the Google thing that was really easy to see because they were these these big things particularly the 911 thing was just huge and of course we'd never gotten the CNN segment without without that being a part of it but but with Superfeet we were just trying to say like you know who who are your people and what are they doing and 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 the main thing we they were so interested in is they were kept saying it's not just athletes it's all these other people using our product and so we wanted to kind of incorporate all those together but pre-production can it can take a little time you know I mean it, it definitely can take a little bit of time all right we're going on four o'clock um, I want to thank John and Max both for awesome presentations great creativity um, thank you thanks for coming out and staying <laughs> and please feel free to uh, harass them uh, personally after uh, the panel if you had more questions uh, as we came up against the clock or drink with them right okay yeah. thanks again all right